Hello everybody, uh, welcome to Lifehacker Live, Private Cloud Demystified. I'm Angus Kidman, the editor of Lifehacker Australia, and we're here today to discuss the private cloud, what it is, what it isn't, and how you can really use it to make your business better. Now, I'm no expert on this topic, but fortunately with us today, we have three gentlemen who are. So joining us today, we have Sam Higgins, who's an independent ICT strategist and analyst, Daniel Greengarten, the managing director of managed cloud provider Bluefire, and we have Phil Goldie, who's who's Director of the Server and Tools Business at Microsoft Australia. So thank you for joining us today, gentlemen. My pleasure. The cloud gets talked about a lot, but one of the most important distinctions is, I suppose, between private cloud and the cloud in general. So the first question is, what is the difference and why does it matter? So maybe Sam, if you want to give us your initial thoughts on that. The analogy I like is the transport analogy. Private cloud, I should say, is like running your own vehicle. You know, you're basically responsible for everything to do with the vehicle, fueling it up, maintaining it. At the other end of the spectrum, we have the full kind of public cloud model. Somewhere in between there's hybrid, but public cloud is the equivalent of the bus or the train. You know, it's basically provided as a shared piece of infrastructure. You pay a small fee to get on, get to where you want to go. You know, similarly with private and public cloud. You know, at one end you're paying for everything. At the other end, you're paying just a small share uh, to access that infrastructure. Okay, so if this is the distinction we see, how do you see this playing out, Daniel, when your customers come in asking for these services? What's making them say, private is the way I want to go. Okay, so there's an elephant in the room we generally need to address when we're dealing with cloud, and that is security. The way that we address that, and using that analogy, is that in public cloud it's accessible over the internet. So if you're on a train, well then you're subject to the people around you and how they may smell. But if you're in private cloud, really what you are is in either a shared or dedicated version of your own instance. And that is uh, warranted and secured by private networks, not accessible to the internet and protected by enterprise grade firewalls and security apparatus that uh, really ensures that your data and the um, profiles and applications that are stored therein are looked after and, and secure. So obviously, Phil, Microsoft plays on both sides of this divide. So what, what's the important distinction from your point of view? Uh, for us, I think, to echo uh, Sam's point, it's a lot about choice. So. You know, if you, th if you go back to that sort of analogy of uh, the car versus public transport, what, what most people you know, on the planet use is a combination of both, right? It's not reasonable to expect you can go everywhere on the bus, uh, but there are times you don't want to take your car, and that, kind of, that, that comes down to choice. And, and we see the same thing in terms of how customers are approaching cloud solutions, uh, predominantly through sort of three tiers. The public cloud, which is where you get the greatest economies of scale, the greatest efficiencies, because the capital expenditure of companies providing those, those solutions is so huge, Microsoft amongst them. Um, the partner-hosted uh, cloud service provider model, the likes of which you know, Bluefire are a great example in the Australian market, and then the kinds of uh, transformation around cloud that customers are doing in their own data center. And for us, you know, to your point, it's about choice. So we're, you know, we're playing uh, in each one of those areas and trying to be the technology enabler of a lot of those, uh, those solutions in those three spaces. Now, the parallel trend, I suppose, that's happening in enterprise IT at the same time is virtualization. You've got a lot of people who are virtualizing workloads and putting them on servers, which may well be hosted. What, what, how can we distinguish that from private cloud? Because they're not really the same thing. Where do you draw the line? Mm. I think, uh, just to, to continue that, I mean, it's, it's a key um, consideration, I think, that we see a lot of customers going through now. There's an expectation that I've virtualized, therefore I am cloud, or I'm in the cloud. And it's, it's absolutely a key starting point as a key enabling technology, but there's a whole bunch of stuff on top of that uh, that really takes the solution to something that you'd, you'd hang your hat on and, and call a cloud. So there's a bunch of capabilities when we talk about cloud that are really important, that are above and beyond just virtualization, but virtualization is a really key uh, part of the technology stack. I think to that point, we always need to consider really what we call a, what I call the, the continuum of IT. So where you are in the evolutionary chain from managing and running your own infrastructure and assets to taking the decision to virtualize, to say therefore I'm virtualized, therefore I am cloud, to Phil's point is an important evolutionary phase, but to consider things like service catalogs that sit on top of it uh, really gets you into the cloud continuum. So obviously part of that evolution is involved with the size of the company and how it grows. Mm -hmm. uh, is there a point where there's an obvious company size where maybe you say, right now we've really got to start thinking about private cloud? Do you see that kicking in, Sam? I think Phil made the point before about in, if we take public cloud, the appeal of public cloud is, is the economies of scale that can be achieved from that infrastructure. I, I think the same is definitely true of private cloud. Um, you can certainly have a small virtual server and you can automate it up, up until a point, but I think where the real benefits of private cloud come, particularly preparing an enterprise, 
um, with a private cloud. So uh, as Daniel said, it can be transitioned to other modes of cloud down the track. Really does probably um, have the biggest ROI in our medium to large enterprise.